In this video I will show you how to animate a photo in 2.5D. Uh, this is a famous 2.5D effect and we will use the parallax. Uh, it basically consists in taking a still photo, separating it into uh, different layers and position those layers in uh, the space. Then uh, using a 3D camera uh, we will be able to move in that space. Uh, it's funny because uh, you can use just one photo and uh, take in consideration all of the advantages of uh, a single photo. Uh, so for example, uh, you can use a flash, uh, which uh, you, do, you can't use in a video, of course. So, first of all, uh, let's uh, uh, shoot our photo. Uh, in uh, my case, uh, it will be me uh, throwing uh, some uh, balls in, uh, in the air and then we will move uh, in the uh, 3D space. Uh, okay, uh, remember that uh, this uh, technique can be done in any compositing software with uh, 3D, basically. The first thing uh, to take a photo is to uh, find some props. Uh, I will try to find them in my bedroom right now. What I have in mind is uh, to use the Canon RC6 remote to uh, set a 2 second uh, remote shutter and uh, then uh, uh, at the end of those 2 seconds I will throw in the air those balls and uh, then I can make some funny faces. Important if you are shooting th something in movement like me, use a high shutter speed and make sure there's no mirror uh, behind you basically, so you don't get the reflection. Direi che ci siamo quasi. Of all the images I shot, uh, I chose this one, and uh, since I shot it in RAW, I can, uh, once I've imported it in Photoshop, uh, uh, make some adjustment, uh, which I'm not going to explain, basically these are just uh, color and distortion uh, adjustment. So, once you've corrected it, uh, uh, click open, and this is the image. Okay. Now go to path and create a new path. Take the pen tool and draw a shape around the, the actor you want to uh, subtract from uh, the image. Uh, make a quite detailed shape uh, and uh, make sure you don't include uh, parts of the background, so it's better to cut out uh, some parts of uh, the subject than including uh, some parts of the background. Um, I will not uh, explain uh, every command uh, of uh, Photoshop uh, because uh, it will get very long the tutorial. Uh, so try to follow along and uh, maybe watch some basic uh, uh, Photoshop tutorials. Okay, we are pretty much done. Don't worry too much about the air, uh, just give a general shape and then uh, close the path. Okay, now. Uh, we can uh, now go to create a, a selection and uh, maybe set the feather to 3 pixels like that. Okay, now we can take the selection tool and right click layer via copy. Uh, in this way we have a copy uh, of our subject basically. And this is our background. Now we have to isolate each element we want to separate from uh, the background. In my case I can use uh, the ellipse tool because uh, these are spheres pretty much and uh, I'll do basically the same as before. 
uh, but if your elements are different uh, just use the pen tool like we did for the subject the process is the same so uh, go along until you have isolated each, uh, each element and duplicate the background now we have to use the clone stamp tool to uh, remove every element we have decided to subtract uh, just uh, sample a pattern and uh, repeat it uh, on top of uh, the elements make sure you sample a lot and uh, make sure um, nothing just uh, do this until you're at the end um, it's, more, it's more important in the edges of uh, the elements uh, more than the center. You will understand it after. Since uh, I had the opportunity, I shot uh, a photo um, without the subject so I can uh, skip uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, step of uh, sampling all uh, the, the background, of uh, emptying, of erasing the background. I will uh, just apply the same corrections as uh, before. Uh, so it uh, looks the same and uh, I will open it in Photoshop now uh, I will blend these images these images sorry with the, the one before using masks basically I take um, each uh, uh, I, I take the part of a photo I want and I blend them in this way don't worry too much but because uh, the main purpose of this is to get an image like this at the end okay and now we have a empty background uh, and our elements. Save the uh, file in uh, the project in Photoshop and import it into After Effects. Okay, uh, we have uh, different options for importing. Okay, uh, we have to select the third one with the retain layer sizes. Uh, the uh, first option, just to know, footage will import all the project as if it was uh, just one image. Uh, composition will import it maintaining the different uh, layer um, ar arrangement but will put the center uh, the anchor point in the center of the document but uh, and and sorry this the third option uh, which is uh, composition retain layer sizes which will do the same but will put the anchor point in the center of each layer which is uh, more uh, handy for us in uh, this case uh, I, highly su I highly suggest uh, you try uh, the different uh, uh, options to make sure you understood what I just said. Okay, uh, click OK and now we can open our composition. We can see our layer, of course. Go to the composition settings and change the size to 1920 by 1080 since these were photo and the size were, was very, very higher make the layers 3D and uh, uh, now <laughs> sorry, we will uh, work on that okay now uh, scale down and reposition the layer the subject and the background we uh, can use the original background uh, as a reference if we want we can scale it down and uh, um, drop down the opacity so we can reposition our layers better now create a new camera uh, make it uh, 28 millimeter and click ok now um, click on the background and uh, um, move it backwards in the space uh, I will put it uh, to around uh, 3000 3, pixels uh, more or less and then scale it up to fit the composition basically nothing changed uh, but uh, if you look in 3D the uh, background is far away from the subject and the camera and this will allow us to use this uh, position, uh, the, this depth difference, to make this effect, this look. We can also reposition our actor as we want and uh, make maybe rename uh, the layers. Okay, now we can have fun uh, positioning our uh, 3D elements, uh, uh, in my case, uh, th these balls. Uh, we can uh, position them whenever, uh, whenever and wherever we want. Uh, maybe I will try to uh, 
re repeat uh, the original uh, position like this uh, using uh, the background uh, reference and uh, um, now let's uh, let's have fun we can uh, position uh, differently uh, these uh, 3d elements in uh, in space in uh, depth uh, make sure you take uh, the right arrow, in my case uh, is uh, the blue one, so you move it uh, just uh, on the z-axis. Uh, then you can uh, duplicate uh, the, the, the elements uh, uh, if you wish, you can uh, put them uh, really close to the camera, you can scale, it, uh, scale them up, uh, uh, down, you can apply some hue and saturation, you can uh, maybe uh, apply some rotation uh, with uh, an expression, for example, um, to to the balls uh, and make it look uh, as if uh, they are ro rotating actually, because this is a video and if uh, those are rotating, it's better, of course. It makes it more uh, realistic. Uh, now we can cut the work area using a B and uh, right click trim comp to work area to just 5 seconds then uh, make some keyframes to uh, the camera press P uh, basically you select the camera layer press P and uh, click on the stopwatch okay now let's go to the end and move the camera forward but just a little bit because the key of the of this effect is to make everything subtle very very subtle uh, in 3d what we can see is uh, uh, our uh, elements our assets uh, and the camera uh, that move moves uh, in this space this is a fact we have pretty much uh, achieved and uh, this is the main structure of the effect to make it a bit more realistic, we can select the subject layer and uh, make a precompose of it. Uh, maybe call it subject comp and leave all attributes into the, um, com the composition. Uh, now click OK and double click yes, to enter the composition. Now we have this comp in which we can uh, modify uh, our subject go to the composition settings and increase uh, a bit uh, the sizes of this composition so we have uh, enough space to work use the puppet tool to um, find find some uh, uh, points some joints in our body and click on those points uh, basically these uh, points will allow us to move and distort our subject uh, at activate uh, show the mesh uh, path uh, and make sure that uh, there's no part of the image uh, which is uh, cut out uh, like in this case it's important because if uh, there are uh, cut out uh, pieces uh, the effect will look really ugly uh, basically this is the main concept we can uh, uh, increase the triangles and uh, and the expansions uh, uh, parameters to fix this error uh, I will put uh, uh, 12 in the expansions and uh, maybe have a final check uh, I think uh, this, uh, this one is okay of course you have to be in the first frame of the composition uh, because uh, when you click the uh, some keyframes have been created now go to the end of the composition and move those points you will see that uh, the image uh, distorts itself to follow the, those points basically so uh, just make some really subtle movements uh, don't exaggerate because it will be really ugly to see and in the main comp this is what you will have uh, now we can apply maybe some uh, blur with the camera lens blur effect uh, to the background uh, repeat edge pixels uh, ma make sure it's on and maybe increase the blur radius to 20 or whatever you like drag this comp onto the, a new comp uh, and this will be our final composition. Uh, 
uh, now create a new solid and call it flare. We will use uh, optical flares plugin by Video Copilot. It's an external plugin. It's not included in After Effects uh, to create a, mm, a sun, a, 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 a little sun. I will uh, look for my our custom uh, uh, optical flares and set the trans transfer mode to on transparent. I will put it in the upper right corner and uh, maybe apply some flickering uh, uh, of 25-25 uh, uh, both for speed and amount to make it a bit of uh, flickering. Now I create a new adjustment layer and uh, maybe create some contrast, contrast with curves. Create a new adjustment layer, call it vignette and uh, apply some exposure and a mask to simulate a to recreate a vignette effect. Also feather the mask and uh, create a new adjustment layer. <laughs> One more. Uh, now we will apply the add grain uh, effect which will add <laughs> a little grain to uh, the, the final effect. It will uh, help uh, uh, blending everything together. I advise you to put uh, something about uh, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 in the intensity parameter. Once you're happy with your grain, make sure you switch the viewing mode to final output because uh, this, and this is a pretty uh, uh, CPU intensive effect so just uh, apply it at the end. And this is the final effect that we have created. Uh, the 2.5D effect with parallax. I really hope you liked the, the video and that uh, uh, this technique will help you in uh, some uh, short films or maybe show reels uh, or if you want to show a photo you, you did, you made. Um, I just uh, remember you that you can um, insert, you can uh, add as many 3D uh, elements as you want. Uh, I just uh, uh, showed you the theory of uh, the effect. Now it's your turn to show me what you can do. Okay, I may maybe just follow me on uh, social media accounts uh, if you if you wish. Uh, there's uh, Facebook uh, and more. Hope you liked the, the video and uh, we will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.